Babylon Control to all Star Fury squadrons. Stand by to attack, but do not, repeat, do not initiate combat. Let them fire first. We won't start this fight, but by God, we'll finish it. The Mitchell Hyandine Star Fury, aka Star Fury Aurora, proved itself to be one of the greatest assets of Earth Force used to serve and defend the peoples and interests of humanity's Earth Alliance. As such, this vessel was featured prominently throughout the Babylon 5 series and has become one of the most respected non-atmospheric fighter designs found across the entire sci-fi genre. In this video, I'd like to discuss the Star Furies of Babylon 5 and how they came to be held in such high regard by science fiction fans. After its introduction in the 2240s, the Mark II SA-23E Mitchell Hyandine Star Fury quickly became known as one of the most capable non-atmospheric combat vessels employed by the younger races of the Milky Way galaxy. The vehicle is powered by a fusion reaction system and possesses various stabilizers along with four multi-nozzle engines which are positioned to provide an impressive level of speed and unmatched maneuverability. In fact, it is the only fighter craft capable of flying backward or forward at the same speed. Its turning ability is unparalleled as they can pivot 180 degrees in less than a second. In order to avoid an excess of stress and to mitigate the threat of disorientation, the vessel was designed with its cockpit at the center, which is intended to minimize the effects of high-G maneuvers. Entry to the cockpit is achieved via dorsal pressure hatch, typically while the craft sits locked into a launch cradle. Once inside, the pilot is strapped in and situated in an upright position with legs bent. As a further safety precaution to guard against hull breaches, Star Fury pilots will also generally operate the vessel while wearing a full pressure suit. In case of an emergency, the cockpit itself also acts as an escape pod, enabling the survival of many Earth Force pilots who would otherwise have been destroyed along with the vessel. The speed and agility of the Star Fury greatly adds to its effectiveness as a deep space interdiction and reconnaissance fighter. Aside from its impressive maneuverability, this craft also possesses a formidable weapons payload, including an array of pulse cannons and missiles, along with several hardpoints enabling it to perform a wide range of both combat and non-combat functions. Other useful features of the Mark II Star Fury include a retractable claw located in the ventral hull which can be used for towing or other tasks which require the vessel to attach itself to foreign objects. The upper wing of the craft is generally used as a canvas to express the personality of the crew, to showcase specialized markings denoting a pilot's accomplishments, or simply to distinguish a particular squadron. As a result of the focus on in-space maneuverability, the Star Fury lacks the aerodynamic requirements to operate efficiently inside a planet's atmosphere. Apart from this limitation, the vessel also does not possess an FTL jump drive and therefore relies upon pre-formed jump points typically created by jump gates. Squadrons of Star Furies can usually be found on most capital ships in service to Earth Alliance, and they are relied upon to defend deep space installations such as Babylon 5. From the Babylon 5 station, fighters are dropped from its Cobra bays as they rely on the centrifugal force responsible for the station's artificial gravity to launch them into space. The arrival of the supremely agile Star Fury Aurora allowed the Earth Alliance to defend itself against the threat of most other alien fleets. However, Earth Force quickly discovered that aside from its maneuverability, the Minbari Nial class fighter proved itself superior to the Star Fury in all other areas. This resulted in the destruction of many Star Furies during the bloody multi year conflict known as the Earth Minbari War. Eventually, the Mark II Star Fury Aurora began to be replaced by the Mark III Star Fury Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt was built to hold a crew of two seated in a position typical of modern-day fighter jets. As a result, the pilot and co-pilot were more susceptible to G-forces than older models. Similar to previous models, the cockpit of the Thunderbolt was designed to detach and serve as an escape pod. 
The Mark III was designed to be capable of atmospheric flight via the use of deployable atmosphere wings. It also possessed more advanced engines, granting it more speed at the slight cost of reduced deceleration. The weaponry of the Thunderbolt was also vastly improved from the previous models, and combined with its ability to maintain atmospheric flight, it could be used as an effective light bomber capable of executing planetary strikes. At the time of this model's introduction, Earth Alliance had entered into a civil war, resulting in several battles between the Aurora and Thunderbolt-class starships. Although the Mark III's were more advanced in many areas, the older Mark II Star Furies proved to hold their own during these skirmishes. Other known variations of this ship include the rare and expensive Stealth Star Fury, which features some of Earth Force's most advanced stealth components and the Heavy Star Fury, which came equipped with a twin-barreled pulse cannon and an additional cockpit on the aft, allowing a second crew member to operate its rear-facing cannons. Ultimately, the Star Fury Aurora remained the face of the Earth Alliance fleet as it fought to secure its place in the galaxy, and as such, is heavily featured throughout the entire run of Babylon 5. Although many might be quick to point out similarities between the Star Furies of Babylon 5 and the X-Wings featured in the Star Wars franchise, the designers of the Star Fury, Ron Thornton and Steve Berg, have indicated that any similarities between the two are purely a coincidence. Instead, the general shape of the Star Fury was derived partly from one of Steve Berg's unused Centurion machine designs for the movie Terminator 2. Aside from that, the Star Fury's developers were also inspired by Ron Cobb's design for the gun starship from 1984's The Last Starfighter. Although the Star Fury may appear to resemble several other famous starship designs, perhaps the biggest reason for the popularity of this ship among the larger science fiction fandom is the fact that it was intentionally designed to be as realistic and believable as possible when considering the laws of Newtonian physics. Interestingly, it has been reported that during the run of Babylon 5, creator J. Michael Straczynski had received inquiries from NASA scientists who expressed interest in the possibility of using the Star Fury's design as they worked to develop their own real-life spacefaring cargo loader crafts. In my opinion, some of the best elements of science fiction are those that are built on a foundation of scientific discovery and those that strive to imagine the future possibilities of scientific advancements. And it's in this way that the Star Fury shines as an excellent example of the marvelous creativity and an added depth of immersion that can spring from the exploration of real-world scientific facts, concepts, and theories. But I'm curious to know what you think of the Star Fury's designs showcased in Babylon 5. Is there a particular feature of these fighters that you find most interesting? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Babylon 5 and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.